Welcome to DTLT Today. I'm Tim Owens, and I am all by myself today. Uh, I got left by Andy, by Martha. Jim's out being a rock star, so this is what you get today, but it's not so bad. Uh, we've got a pretty awesome episode uh, lined up today. Speaking of which, did you see yesterday's episode? Because if you haven't, you definitely should. Uh, episode number, I believe it was 66, 67. Uh, we interviewed Charles Shields, a guy uh, that started working for Mary Washington. He's the Associate Director of Great Lives, and he was interviewing and writing a book about Kurt Vonnegut, who um, is no longer with us, passed away, but he's got a book coming out November 8th, and it was just an awesome episode. It had some really cool stories about Vonnegut uh, and you know how he's using social media, both with the book and with uh, what he's doing at Mary Washington. So really cool episode. So I would say check that out. Speaking of news, I figured I would take this episode and catch you up on a bunch of different people. What DS106 people are doing, what DTLT people are doing right now, because if I'm by myself, you need to know where everybody else is. So let's cover it. Jim Groom is actually away at the Open Egg Conference, and I'm really jealous of him because he gets to meet a whole lot of cool people and hang out with them. He's up there with Grant Potter, Scott Leslie, oh geez, I'm forgetting uh, Brian Lamb. Uh, Chris Lott, I believe, is up there. So many people out there hanging out and talking open ed, and it is so freaking cool. Uh, Jim was keynoting today, talked a lot about uh, getting away from the idea of open educational resources and platforms and just more doing stuff. Uh, I didn't get to actually listen to the keynote uh, just because I figured same old Jim Groom stuff, but I hear it was pretty cool, and there's a whole movement going on now. Uh, what is it? Occupy, Occupy Open Ed? So not sure what all that's about. But anyway, so he's away right now. He's actually uh, down there in Utah, and then he's going up to Washington State, to Portland, uh, where he – Portland is not in Washington State, now that I just said that. Um, but he is in Washington State, not in Oregon. Uh, and he is going to be speaking at another conference, so he'll be back in a little bit. So until then, we get to fill his spot here at DTLT today. Uh, another interesting piece of news, Alan Levine – dropped his iPhone, and it is dead, and he's using an Android device now? What the hell is up with that? So I questioned him about this on Twitter, because I couldn't believe for a second that another diehard Apple fan like the Cog Dog would go to an Android device, and it turns out that it's just temporary, so no worries about that. He's coming back to the fold. But he was actually out hiking, taking pictures. He was leaning off of a rail right over a cliff to take a picture of a train, and dropped his phone. Went right down into the cliff, he tried to catch it, tried to go down there and find it, and just couldn't. So it was dead, gone, couldn't find it at all. So he's using a temporary device, an Android phone, which I would totally feel for him because I used to be on that before I got my iPhone 4S. But this isn't about me, this is about CogDog. So, you know what? Uh, Anyway, he said he's waiting until he can get an unlocked iPhone 4S because he does a whole lot of international travel, which makes complete sense. So that's what he's up to. Another thing I want to point you to is an awesome blog post that just came out, and this is breaking news because it was within the last, like, 15, 20 minutes. Noise Professor, who, if you can't tell, is the one on the right over there, not the left, uh, he actually just put out a blog post that was really, really awesome, talking about not being afraid of you know, being able to prove yourself with an idea that you have before you actually do it. So there's this uh, suspension of disbelief that you almost have to have in higher education. And the thinking behind it is that, uh, you know, you've got this really great idea. It's something that you know is going to work pretty awesome. You're, you're not sure if it's going to be 100 percent, but you think it could be really cool. Get out there and do it, and don't let administration take you down a notch and say, you know what, uh, this isn't proven, so we can't do it. So just get out there and start doing cool stuff. 
uh, that was a lot of what I was getting from the open ed stuff today too. Uh, a lot of people just saying, you know, you just got to get out there and start doing the doing the stuff, working with the community and things like that. Really cool post. I'll put it up in the show notes today. Martha Burtis put out an interesting post. Uh, we are actually in the process at Mary Washington of looking at e-portfolios, and by we, I mean we stuck it on our special projects coordinator, Martha. And so she was blogging about this because she's looked at several different products along with this committee that she's on. And the end result of it is basically that they can't find anything that works well with systems that we already have and what, what really is an e-portfolio system to begin with. So she put out the call saying, can't we do this in WordPress? Couldn't you have an e-portfolio system where students are logging into the same system that they're using for blogging, the same system that the faculty and staff here are using for their content management system? Can't we go all in with WordPress and use it for everything? And I think it's a noble goal. But we need a little help because that's actually something that we'd have to like pretty much build from the ground up. Uh, so there's a lot of ideas in there, and what I'm not so clear on, and what I don't think she is either, is how assessment ties in with ePortfolio. So we've got the whole WordPress piece of it down in terms of how do you get student work up and online. That's not an issue at all, right? But how do you assess it? And that seems to be, you know, the assessment side of things at the campus is a whole nother side. You know, and uh, I know that uh, Martha may not want to even get into all that, but she's got a great blog post. I'll put it in the show notes, and you can take a look at that. The last one is actually someone who is not in DS106 right now, but he should be. And so I'm going to tag him right here and make sure that he gets in with the, this kind of stuff because he's always blogging about really cool things. He's a guy that I know from way back, Tim Stommer, uh, works up in a uh, Northern Virginia school in the K-12 through arena. Um, not a teacher, but um, he's in the instructional technology field with them and put out an awesome blog post. His blog, by the way, is assortedstuff.com. If you don't follow him, you should. He's on Twitter, Tim Stommer, S-T-A-H-M-E-R, and you should totally follow him and tell him that he needs to get involved with DS-106 stuff. But I know him from VISTI, which is the Virginia Society for Technology and Education. Uh, we've worked together on various things there and gotten to know each other both through Twitter and through blog posts and things like that. But just a really cool dude. And he put out a blog post today as well. And it's all about hacking. And so NPR had this uh, segment last month about talking about the word hackers and what that implies and what it means. And so he had this question, which was, why don't we teach students about hacking? Why are we afraid of it? And why don't we teach that kind of stuff? And I can pull out a quote from here. He actually says, uh, if you ignore that for a moment, the whole like, you know, background of, you know, what the idea of hacking actually implies, and look at the original meaning, which was a term of praise and admiration applied to someone who understands the foundations of a particular technology and works to learn more about the details of playing, manipulating, using, and altering it in ways designers never thought possible. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that we should be tweeting, or, I mean, not tweeting, that's the kind of stuff that we should be teaching our students to use, right? I mean, we want to create a society where people aren't afraid to experiment. This goes back to Noyce Professor's post. You know, this is the kind of stuff that we should be teaching students. So when you hear about hackers, you shouldn't be afraid of that. And that's actually the core type of stuff that we need to be teaching students. Tim Stommer is an awesome, awesome guy. Uh, he regularly goes to all of these different conferences. I, you know, he's been up there at Educon. I see him at Visti every year, and he's pretty active in that organization. So follow him, tell him you love his post, and tell him that he needs to get involved with DS-106 because I bet he's got a lot to offer in that. Meanwhile, that's all the news that I've got for now, but I figured this would be a good wrap-up post, and I'm all by myself, so why not? I figured I could do it. So thanks for watching, y'all. Check it out. Later. Thank you.